No, sir. Um, just because I'm a sovereign peace officer, I've been sworn into the sovereign peace officer. So I can be able to, you know, go anywhere, you know, with my badge and my gun. Um, yeah, I can give y'all a copy of the, the old sure. specimen. Okay. Me. And it's already been filed in the county and also a postal. I'm thinking it might be next door with the Bridgestone Arena, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, this is the, the Metro Police Station. Program. Yeah, but we don't hand out uh, badges and guns like that. Well, I mean, I've already went through the proper channels. You know, I've already got a postal by the Secretary of State. But they said I had to, uh, if I was going to get my badge, it had to be the police department. But it, it's a different badge. It should have peace officer on there and not police officer. All right, hold on. Okay. <clears throat> So this is Sovereign Citizen Anthony Williams at a police station trying to get them to give him a badge and possibly a gun. Now, what doesn't make sense is he's a sovereign. So, sir, why don't you just make your own badge? Why are you looking to get a badge from police and the minute you have some type of contact with them, you'll say that they don't have any jurisdiction. So if they don't have any jurisdiction, then that means they don't have jurisdiction to give you a badge. This literally makes zero sense. This guy's confused. He don't know what to do. He don't know what to do. So he probably have to have a supervisor come out here. I, I need to. I don't know who I need to talk to, but um, I got my uh, sovereignty peace officer. Um, I've already took my oath, and they sent me here. They said I was supposed to come here, where I can actually get my bags and gun. Okay, I'm sorry. I heard half of that now. You got what now? My, I'm a sovereign peace officer. Uh huh. And I went over to the other police station, but they said I had to come to headquarters in order to be able to get my badge and gun. Okay. Do you know who you're supposed to see or? They just sent me over here. I mean, I got my papers. That's been apostilled by the Secretary of State. Uh, it's already been filed in the county and also published. Are you sure it's not the state supposed to give you that? Nah, they sent me here. <laughs> I believe part of the state is supposed to give that to you. I'll be honest with you, I've been around here 15 years. I've never known of anything like this. I may be wrong, but... Um, so I, I have, do I have, I have to purchase my own weapon, being a peace officer? I thought it had to be registered with you all. <laughs> this dude right here is mentally unstable. He is taking his fantasy world to a whole nother level. He is right here trying to pull a con on the police. First and foremost, sir, there is no such thing as a sovereign peace officer. Number one. Number two, if you're a sovereign, then that means you believe that law enforcement doesn't have jurisdiction over you. Yet, they would have jurisdiction to issue you a badge and a gun? This doesn't make any sense, sir. I can't believe this dude is really taking his scam this far. And then has the nerve to actually film the ordeal. This dude is mentally ill. Help 
me out a little bit now. Okay. Okay. What do you mean by a sovereign peace officer? Right, a sovereign peace officer. Uh, I'm a U.S. non-citizen national, not a U.S. citizen. Uh, being such, my jurisdiction is a little different than you all's jurisdiction. My jurisdiction actually can extend further than you all's jurisdiction because you all have a specific area, but a sovereign, we don't have a, a, like a, just a geographical location as a jurisdiction. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. Is this something you just started doing, or have you done this before? No, well, this is the first time I've done it. I mean, i got friends that's already done it, right. like in of different states. Are you working out of an embassy, or? No, no, I mean the Tennessee Republic. I mean the Republic of Tennessee. I mean, because you got, you know, like, you got statutes and U.S. code jurisdiction, and then you have common law jurisdiction, and that's the jurisdiction I follow on, common law jurisdiction. That's why we have to have a peace officer badge and not police officer. It would be peace officer. This officer looks dumbfounded. He has no clue what this man is talking about. And the reason he has no clue what this man is talking about because everything he is saying to him is made up. So, officer, don't feel bad. I understand. Okay, under the, the law that you understand, right. what all have you done thus far to meet the standards, and what do you have left to do? Well, under, under common law jurisdiction, as long as I'm a law-abiding you know, citizen resident in that state, mm -hmm. then that, and I've already done like my aff, uh, aff, affidavit of oath, you know, I took that, and my allegiance. That's the only thing I have to do is for us, and have that filed, but I have to have it filed in the county, and also have an apostille, which I've already done that. Okay. Anthony Williams. Mr. Williams, what was your first name again? Anthony. Anthony.
I give props to this officer because he's really trying to help this fool because he still doesn't realize that this man is running a con. If it was me, I would have been told Mr. Anthony Williams to get the hell out of my police station. Right. My understanding is that they told, they sent me here that I would have to either get my badge or I would have to get a paperwork from you all where I can actually fax it in order to get my badge. He's First of all, that doesn't even make sense. Either you're there to get a badge or you're there to get some paperwork. But it can't be either or. His lie is falling apart, but the officer still hasn't caught on yet. I went to the other building, but they said I had to come over here. What other building? The one on uh, Broadway, 501 Broadway. Oh, the federal courthouse? Uh, is that the courthouse? At 8th and Broad? 
five, yeah, five, I guess. Oh, guess central precinct of it. Yeah, 500 right, 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 okay. right, right. All right. All right, fill me in. What do you, what exactly are you seeking with these? I haven't really had time to look. I just got here just a few minutes ago. Okay. So, um, what, what are you applying for? Exactly? Well, it's just, it's just a sovereign peace officer badge uh, because I don't know if you're familiar with the common law jurisdiction. I don't know if you're familiar. No. Okay. Tell me. Okay, well, with common law, I mean, most people don't know about it. The only thing most people know about common law is common law marriages. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the common law peace officer, basically my jurisdiction is not bound like a county police or a city police. I can actually go anywhere because common law is all 50 states. Okay. You know, and so... So you're, you're not bound by the state line as well, or are you saying right. anywhere within the right. state? Right, in, in 50 states. Okay. Right, because that's common law jurisdiction. That's actually constitutional. Okay. Right. So uh, do you so have to apply for each state? No. Nah. You just you just pick your state. Right, whatever state you're residents, right. Okay. Right. Once you do that. And see what I was told is that once I I come to you all's office that you all would actually have to fax or have I guess I have to have a letter from you all in order to either fax or you will all have to issue it or you all would have to I would have to get a fax from you all to actually send to get my uh, peace officer's badge. Because it's not police officer, it's a peace officer. Okay. All right. This dude is literally just making things up as he goes along. And it's, it's crazy that these police are actually entertaining this nonsense, I guess, because it's just so bizarre. They never heard it before. So they're willing to hear him out. But first, the story just doesn't add up. Because it's either you're there to get the quote-unquote sovereign peace officer badge or you're there to get a piece of paper to fax over to somewhere else to get the badge it can't be both that just doesn't make sense so if you're there if you it would make more sense if you were just there for the paper cool but you can't say i'm either here to get my badge or I'm here to get a paper to fax to somewhere else and then get it just doesn't make sense. This dude right here is taking his fantasy world too far. They just need to lock him up already for impersonating a peace officer because a peace officer is actually a real thing. That's a civil servant. There is no such thing as a sovereign peace officer though. I'm going to take notes here while we're talking. Okay. So who actually uh, issues you the peace officer badge? I mean, it would be the state of Tennessee. I mean, it would be under, because you all fall under the state of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So. What what office will you take your paperwork to to file that will actually give you the badge? Why they? I, I was told this one. Okay. Yeah, I was told this one, the headquarters. They said I had to come to headquarters. Now, they say that because we're uh, the county seat? Is that why they're saying Right, that? right, because this is the headquarters, too. You know, so they right. said, well, you got to go to headquarters. Right. right, right. So they told me you got to go to headquarters in order to get the uh, either the letter or they would issue, because my badge would be different than you all's, because it, it has to have on there peace officer, sovereign peace officer, not police officer. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if, if you all would actually have to use the funds to do that or would that come out of my pocket? Right. I'm not I'm not uh for me if it comes out of y'all or out of mine, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Do you have something that spells out all the steps that you take to go through this process? No, not um not at hand. I can probably get it. Yeah, of course you can probably get it because all you're gonna do is run home, turn on your computer, type up some crap and then bring it back to them. Or do you know where, where we could get a copy of it? Uh, you could probably go, it's a website um, off the top. I think it's Fam Guardian. All one word? Right, all one word, I think, dot org. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they, they explain like what the common law, constitutional law, uh, and the jurisdiction, and what that entails.
Okay, so it encompasses more than just the police right. officer badge. Right, right. I mean, okay. it, it encompasses everything because, like, right now, my status, I'm a U.S. non-citizen national, and a lot of people don't know what that means. It's different than a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. You know, I was born here, and I'm a national, but to be a U.S. citizen, that means you're bound by the IRS codes, which I'm not. That's why if you saw my paperwork, you see my, um, my tax status for non-resident alien. That's it. He just blew up his own spot. He just stated that he was born here. Now, anybody knows that if you are born here, you are a citizen, point blank, period. You are not a non-citizen national. You're not a sovereign. Just stop it. If I was the officer, as soon as he said that, I would have just kicked him out of my office. Because most people don't realize that actually the IRS is operating illegally in the United States. This guy is fucking stupid! Is that, uh, when you refer to that, you refer to this affidavit of oath of allegiance? Right, right, I had to, had to take that, you know, they had to have that notarized and stamped on the common law. Mm -hmm. And it might be on there, I think it's over there, the one about the tax. Yeah, it's a, it's a process. I mean, it's a lot of paperwork you have to file in order to get that status. It's just not, you just can't walk in and get it. I mean, it's a lot of stuff you have to go through. Mm -hmm. A lot of forms you have to file. So this W-A-B-E-N file? Right. Uh, for the, I guess, non-resident alien right. status? Right, right. Uh, you just get that off the IRS website? Right. Now, have you, do you electronically file this? To the IRS, or do you? You can either you can either electronically or you can mail it. Okay. Or if you have a local office, you can actually take it in. So if you've already filed this one, right? In July, did you uh, fax this in? Email it? I mailed it. Mailed it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I usually mail everything and certify mail it just to make sure okay. that it got there and I have a record of it, you know. Did you receive anything back from them? Not yet. Did they say how long it takes? They say usually 45 days before you hear something, so... And then, and then once you file this and it's on file with RS, this entitles you Right. To be a non-resident alien, does that mean you're exempt from uh, federal income tax? Right, income tax, all of that. Because all that is really, see, most people don't realize if you read the tax code, paying taxes through the IRS is actually voluntary, but most people think it's mandatory and it's not. Uh, they just had a court case, I don't know if you're familiar with a guy named Witty Harrell. The IRS tried to sue him for not paying taxes, and he won because there is no tax code that said you have to pay taxes on your income. Now, according to the Constitution, you pay taxes on whatever you profit from a business, mm -hmm. but your earned income wages is not business. That's, that's an exchange. You're exchanging your work for pay. That's not profit. There's no tax code that said you have to pay taxes on your income. Now, according to the Constitution, you pay taxes on whatever you profit from a business, mm -hmm. but your earned income wages is not business. That's, that's an exchange. You're exchanging your work for pay. That's not profit. <laughs> but most people don't know that. Right. Where was the Harold case? What? You know where was the Harold case? I want to say California. But you can just like type its name, it's a witty, W-H-I-T-E-Y, Harrell, H-A-R-R-E-L, and kind of Google it and it should pull up his trial. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that been? I think four or five years. Okay. So probably 2005, 2006, somewhere around there? Yeah, somewhere around there. Now, so up until this year, you paid. Yeah. You paid for federal tax. Right, right. So as long as you, as long as you have that U.S. citizen status, 
then you have to because you're bound by that contract to mm -hmm. do that. But the only way you exempt is if you uh, expatriate yourself and become a U.S. national, American mm -hmm. national, or U.S. non-citizen national. Okay. And what, what form do you fill out to declare that? Uh, it it would be separate from this. Yeah, it's, yeah, right? it's separate. Yeah, it's separate from so that. It's, it's not in this package. Right now, it's okay. not in that. Yeah, it's separate. It, that's actually a longer form. It's like twenty pages. Okay. Yeah. So you've already you. Yeah, I've already, you've already filled right, that out. right. I've already done that. And you submit that to who? To the IRS. Okay. Yeah, all them too. And then you actually send one to the IRS and to the United States Citizen Immigration Services. The USCIS, okay. yeah, you had to send one of them, too. So how long ago did you fill that form out? That was last month, too. Last month? Right, that was last month. So I'm just waiting on my, they supposed to send me a certificate uh, of nationalization, uh, the U.S. non-citizen nationalization. So I should be getting a certificate, hopefully within that 45-day period. Now, I'm going to act as if I believe your lie, even though we all know it's all a bunch of crock. So... Shouldn't you have waited to get your certificate before you headed down to the police station to get a peace officer badge? Wouldn't it make sense to bring that certificate with you, sir? Okay. And then once you get that, right. that's a requirement to satisfy right. this. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tedious process, but, you know, once you go through it, you know, you're definitely reap the benefits of it. So this religious exemption affidavit? Right. This is in lieu of a driver's license? That's correct. And because unless you're a U.S. citizen, you're bound by having to have the license and registration, but once you're not a U.S. citizen, then you're not. You're not bound by that. So apparently you found the secret loophole to skirting around laws and not having to have a driver's license. And it all revolves around expatriation and becoming a non-citizen national. So that way you can just break the law as you feel, right? Give me a freaking break, sir. Does this require you to have any type of uh, international driver's license or international permit? No, you like can that? get one, but it's not necessary. You can, but it's not necessary. Now, if you're going to go travel to another country, then they probably will require that you do get one, an international, because that's only for the United States. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They just proved that who I am. Do you have an official, uh, like mm -hmm. a certified copy, mm -hmm. if, if they need one? Right. Mm -hmm. You see, all those those are just copies that actually was filed in the uh, Register of Deeds office, in the County Register of Deeds office. This one? Yeah, all of that. All of that is in, it has a copy on public record because by law I have to do that. Did you file? Right. Now, is this, a, is this a form that you got uh, from the state? Uh, I see it has a, a seal in the U.S. seal right. here. Is this something that you just get and you you fill it out, or did you just, or is this uh, something you got from this website? Right. You just no. You draft that. You draft the um, the oath of allegiance or the oath, um, and basically you make make sure you have the proper wording in there. Mm -hmm. And you sign it, but you have to have it notarized. You know, you have to have it notarized. And then once you notarize it, you got to make sure that notary is valid. That's why you got to go to down to the county to make sure that that notary is the valid notary to basically notarize that document. Uh, you have to file it in the county. Uh, the county, the state has basically 30 days to rebut it. Once you put it on public record, if they don't rebut it, then they can't come back and say, well, no, we can't issue that because... You know, we don't want to. They had actually, and I actually gave them 60 days to actually uh, view it, uh, put it in a legal notice, 
also in the newspaper for four weeks to make sure because by law you have to do that. Okay. So so this form itself is just something that, that you made up to right, satisfy exactly. the requirements. The requirements, right. Okay. Right, to be a sovereign peace officer. Yes, officer. It seems you're very close to figuring this whole thing out. The simple fact is that this man is literally just making all of this up. Just like he just, at, while he was at home, drafted that piece of paper himself. Anybody can literally do that. Doesn't make it legitimate. And again, you said that was in this famguardian.org. No, no, that's not. No, that's not on the form. That's just like a guideline I got from the website, but I drafted the the form myself. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And this other packet uh, is this what you're filing? This just basic, basically saying that you're. Uh, that I can represent myself in proprio persona if, if need be. Like if I have to go to court or anything like that, I represent myself in proprio persona. That's why, you know, give my own self power of attorney. Because if you don't do that and you go to court and you represent yourself pro se, you can basically get yourself in trouble because you haven't done your due diligence and got your paperwork on file. Okay. So this this doesn't have really anything to do with your peace officer? Oh, no, uh, no, just no that's just something separate. else. Yeah, that's something okay. separate. Yeah, all that's separate. And all this was filed at the same time? Right. Yeah, it was a postilled at the same time. But all of them, some of them were filed in the county at different times. Some of them got different document numbers on them. Okay. So ba basically now you're waiting on the IRS for your reply to your right. your uh, non-resident right. uh, form. Right. And then you're waiting on... Um, A certificate of nationalization. Right. Right. Which... You will then therefore right. send the IRS. Right. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And these are our copies that. No, you to can you can make copies of those because okay. those are actually my actual real copies from the. But y'all can make copies if okay. you like. You can okay. do that. All right. Well, um, I'll take those upstairs then, and then okay. and we'll uh, we'll get started on okay. on what we need to do. Okay. But uh, appreciate you coming by. Uh, no problem. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Sovereign Citizen Anthony Williams did not get his badge and gun from the police precinct. It's just sad that this man is this insane that he is trying to con a police station into giving him a badge and a gun. The very same police station that he says doesn't have jurisdiction over him. But they'll suddenly have jurisdiction to issue him a badge and a gun. This dude right here is a lunatic. He is out of his mind. Hey,